So like the title of this video says, you're probably here because you haven't been able to figure it out either. And that is, how do we solve oil consumption issues with our car? We're gonna take a look at that today. About a couple years ago, I bought this BMW 325i. It's an amazing car, had low mileage, 100,000K, new tires, water pump, thermostat, a bunch of other work done to it, 218 horsepower. It's so much fun to drive, either on the track or on the street. But after very little time of ownership, I was so unlucky to have so many issues with the car, and it was truly a break my wallet experience. Now I have another video um, that I go over everything wrong with the car and how much it cost me and I'll link that down in the description. But the one thing I haven't been able to figure out yet is the oil consumption. Now I'm filming an entire video series complete with DIY repair tutorials, snake oil product tests, and I'm currently in the middle of an engine rebuild to try and figure out how to fix this oil consumption issue. We are going all the way with this problem. So if you have oil consumption issues with your car, consider subscribing and hit the bell for notifications to follow along on this journey and comment down below your make, model, and year of your car and what kind of oil consumption um, per thousand kilometers that you get. So we can, as the community, can see the different cars and who has issues. So hopefully this video series that I'm making can help you guys fix your cars. So let's get started. So in the very first week, I noticed that the oil light had come on. And with a car with 100,000K, you know, I thought, I thought, hey, the car should be in great shape, right? Um, I'll just go change the oil. We start fresh, no problem. So I went and changed the oil. I was going to Zolder Racetrack anyway the following week. So we changed the oil, we went to Zolder, we had a ton of fun, we came back, it's about a three hour drive each way, and the oil light came back on. So I thought to myself, you know, there must be something else going on here, uh, why we're losing oil from somewhere. So I got onto the car. So um, this is the oil pan. As you can see, there's some sweating here, and here there's definitely some oil leaking just in this corner area here. Originally I thought, and you can see there's a little bit of uh, oil on the lowest point there. I thought that I was losing oil from a rear main seal or something like that, but it looks like these bolts here for the oil pan, they're just super loose. Every single one of them was loose. So I tighten them down, I'm gonna clean this up, and hopefully, um, Hopefully, you see there's even some oil dripping there. Hopefully that fixes the problem and I don't have to do this oil pan gasket because it is a long job. The whole subframe has to come out and blah, 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 blah. So I'm gonna clean this up and hopefully next time I get under here, we don't have this problem anymore or at least it slows the problem down. So I took that to the shop. It was about 600 euros. Uh, that's not a DIY thing that you can just do so easily. You can do it. Uh, but uh, got the oil pan gasket replaced and ever since that moment I've been tracking and seeing how much oil this thing actually drinks. So I've done so much research about this issue in the last few years. I'm going to try and summarize it all for you here today and then we're going to talk about the plan and the next steps in order to fix this car and solve this oil consumption issue. So the first thing that you can do is check your PCV valve or check your CCV valve. On a BMW E90, it's called a crank case ventilation valve. And its job is to recirculate the engine gases um, that come out of the valve cover. It gets put back into uh, this uh, crank case ventilation valve where the oil and the gas separate. The oil go back, goes back to the oil pan and the air gets sent back into the intake to get burned by the uh, engine. This is an emission thing. It helps improve emissions, etc. So if you're having oil burning issues, the first thing I would check is your PCV or CCV valve. 
Go and Google that for your car, but on my car, on a BMW E90, what you can do is just open the oil cap, and if you have a massive amount of suction on the oil cap, some suction is okay, it's normal, but if you have a massive amount of suction and you hear kind of a whining or a wheezing noise coming from your PCV valve, you'll know that it's bad and needs to be replaced because that vacuum is actually sucking oil down from the bottom of, from the oil pan into the intake and then it's getting burned and that's where your oil is going. So if it has some normal suction like this, then it means it's working properly. So I've replaced my CCV valve already in my car and that's a tutorial in another video if you're interested in that. So the next biggest thing that it could be is valve stem seals. Now valve stem seal is a little tiny piece of uh, metal and rubber that the valve goes into in order to prevent any oil from running down the valve and into the engine. And what ends up happening over time is that rubber, after so many heat cycles, gets old and brittle um, and it allows, you know, the heating and the cooling of the rubber, it allows some oil uh, when the engine cools to slip down into the engine and on top of the valves, uh, on top of the pistons. And then when you start the car, you burn that oil and you get a, a brief puff of smoke out the back. Now, so what I suggest you doing is on a cold day, you uh, start up your car and see if you get a brief puff of smoke uh, coming out the back. It may not happen every single time, but uh, sometimes if you're parked on, an, uh, on, on different angles, you can uh, get that oil to pool where it needs to be and you'll um, get a puff of smoke at the back when you start the car. So my valve stem seals seem to be okay. That happened maybe once every 100, 100 starts. I would notice a brief puff of smoke coming out the back. Um, so I knew that my, my valve stem seals were okay or um, just getting old and it couldn't be the problem for my car. Because on my car, only after maybe 10, 15 seconds of running, did the smoke um, start to come out the back. And I'll show you that right here. So the last thing that it could be, and it's probably this issue, especially if you have an old higher mileage car, and that's the piston rings. So over time, the piston rings um, can get clogged up and gunked up. So the piston rings, there are normally uh, three main rings on a piston. The first two are for compression reasons to prevent the, that explosion that's pushing down the piston to prevent it from going around the piston and into the crankcase. But the third piston ring on there is called the oil ring. And what it does is it scrapes the oil off of the cylinder walls and back into the crankcase. Now, oil is pumped up normally through an oil squirter. It's pumped up to cool down the piston. It's a normal part uh, process uh, of the engine. The oil cools down the engine and lubricates the cylinders and stuff like that. But after years of abuse, after years of bad oil changes, uh, sludge, and that, and that constant pressure that the piston is under, it, ca it can cause some carbon to build up on the piston rings and this can actually wear out the piston rings. The tension of the piston ring against the wall can wear out, but also they can get choked up or coked up with carbon and freeze the piston ring. And so what a lot of people do is to try and revive the piston rings is they put some like ATF or some fuel injector cleaner down the cylinder, you know, some sea foam or something like that and they let that soak for a couple days to try and free that carbon up again in hopes that the, the piston rings will reseat themselves and reseal the cylinder and prevent oil from getting by. So on my N52, they're notoriously known for having this uh, engine oil burning problem. They have kind of this piston ring that is not so, ha doesn't have so much tension um, in the engine and that allows it to rev a lot higher. Whereas on like Japanese engines, they go for fuel economy 
and so they, they're, the tolerance level is a lot lower, the engine is a lot tighter, and you don't get these kind of oil burning problems as bad. Here was the plan of action that we were gonna take for my car. Number one, we're gonna change the CCV. And we've done that already. I have the video down below. But then number two, we're gonna follow what the forums were saying is to try some products in your, uh, in your engine. You can do some motor flushes. You can do uh, sea foam and stuff down the, the spark plug holes and let the, the cylinder soak um, with this liquid in there to try and free up the rings or free up the carbon around the rings and then burn it off. So we're gonna try a few of those tips and tricks. And we've already accumulated a bunch of those products and we've tried a few of them out already. I'm, I'm making those videos should be ready soon. So don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in following along on that process. But after we've exhausted all possibilities, we're going to rebuild the engine. And we're gonna take it apart and actually see what's going on with the different pieces and see which components failed so that we can understand our engine oil consumption issue a bit better. So now that we've laid down the plan for the next sequence of videos, I hope that you guys follow along and go check out uh, my other videos. I'm really excited to go along on this adventure with you. You can check my social media for some behind the scenes and to see where we are in the progress of the, of the builds. I'm just super excited to see what went wrong in this BMW. I'm really interested. I'm scratching my head as to what it could be and if there is a quick fix that we could follow that will solve this problem for us and hopefully help you guys at home as well solve your oil consumption issues or at least reduce it. If I can get 3,000 kilometers for one liter of oil, I would be pretty happy. That seems to be pretty average, uh, at least in the forums. Please comment below what your current uh, year make model of your car is and what your oil consumption is. I'd love to see uh, where people are at and if you've done anything uh, so far that's worked for you to try and um, reduce your oil consumption. So looking forward to this experiment that we're gonna do together and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, bye.